Hey everyone, thank you for joining me in this video. We're going to be taking a look around my shop. So it's a shop tour of sorts, but right now it is a total mess. So I want to show you what it looks like most of the time. Then we're going to get cleaned up and show you what it looks, what I wished it looked like most of the time. But I wanted y'all to kind of see it because I think a lot of people just think that other people's shops look so much better than theirs. But this is what mine looks like most of the time. It is just piled up. Stuff's dumped everywhere. I mean, it's just, it's, it's piled up. As soon as I come in the door, I'm stepping over stuff. So it is a total mess. But a couple times a year, I get this place spick and span. And it's what I'm going to do starting today. It may take me a day or two to kind of work it into my schedule. But this is the main area. You walk in, so I do all my woodwork in here. Most of the floor equipment stays in here. When I need more space, I roll it around into this side of the shop where I store all my lumber. So I've got this sort of side around this wall, and then there's this wall here, so you can go in through here. I do my engraving here, so I mean hand engraving, this type of stuff. And then I have my lathe, my CNC machine, and I do my video editing here. So I turn stuff in here. I've got this cool shower curtain that goes around the whole thing, keeps all the chips from going all over the place. I've got this dust filter, air filter here from Wynn. I'll put a link in the description for that if y'all kind of are looking for something like that. Bigger one right there. Again, that just helps with the dust in the air. Over here, I've got my metal lathe. I do stuff like do my knife making and all that over here or whatever I'm doing, making jewelry. Uh, over here is wood storage back here. I keep all of my finishes in here. They could burst into flames. I've got my tabletop clamping rack right there. And then just junk. Junk and wood, hot water tank, air handlers also in the basement. So that's a small return I added down here to condition the air, as well as I have multiple registers. So I have to watch that filter. I have to make sure it stays clean. So I have a filter there, a filter inside the unit, and then I have another one upstairs. But I've got enough kind of airflow for that to be okay to have that many filters in there. So that is pretty much it. I'm going to get the shop cleaned up and then uh, I'm going to show you around. We'll kind of get into talking about some actual tools, equipment, and maybe some of the projects I'm working on. And I need to start making a tabletop, so I may even do that in this video. But this video will probably be filmed over the course of a couple days. So let's get started. I got the shop semi-clean, so I'm going to start working on my tabletop because that's going to make a little bit of a mess. So I'll get that made and then that table delivered and uh, get the shop cleaned up the rest of the way after that. So what I've done is I have a lot of wood in my shop that is random stuff. So normally I have a stock of uh, old yellow pine cut on a circle mill. I've burned through all that. Then I had a whole bunch of oak that was sawn out of dead standing oak trees. So that had a nice look for... Uh, uh, farm tables so all that's gone and now I've got bunches of random stuff it's just too nice to get rid of like these are walnut boards these are cherry boards but I didn't have enough to really make much of anything so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make kind of a quilted tabletop um, to some degree it might just be a mix of uh, walnut and cherry that's not my personal taste but you know you go to anyone's house they're going to have stuff in there that they love that might not be what you'd pick so I'm not always concerned about exactly if something's my style. As long as I'm happy with the way it is made, um, I'll make it sometimes, especially when it's a customer's request. Uh, for example, the super large oak trestle table that I made that time, those X bracing that was in that, if you saw that video, uh, I wouldn't have put that in myself, but the customer really liked that look, so I added those in for her. Um, but, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead, get these boards planed up, and uh, start getting them prepped for a glue up.
all the boards are plain, so I thought I'd give a slight explanation. I mean, a quick explanation of what I'm doing exactly. So the first thing I do is plane them all just on one side, so a rough side facing down. I just keep planing on the same side. Then, after they are all plane to the same thickness with one rough side, I flip them over and run them one pass through the planer just to kind of skim them all somewhat even but leaving a lot of texture. So that is how I'm kind of getting that texture and I'll just glue the top up and then I sand it. And so it will become slightly more refined than what you see here. Basically it's going to highlight the saw marks a little bit more but the top will have a little bit of texture to it, a little wave, won't be perfect. Um, so just on these small amounts of boards, I probably planed an eighth of an inch maybe a touch more off of uh, some of them and then flipped them and barely skimmed anything off. This was empty before and that is completely full and probably some even made it into that once it gets to being full this much. So just as a reference of how much uh, kind of storage you need just for planing that many boards. Another thing to keep in mind is if you didn't have one of these, uh, you know, at least a setup like this, all this would be on the ground. So doing this inside gets really, really rough. And I just did all that planing, and you can see it's not just a big cloud of dust in here. I'm sure there's some, there's some airborne dust, but this does a really good job of getting most of all the chips. That bag is filtering out some, but of course that's just a fabric bag, and then this is kind of cleaning out the air the rest of the way.
So the finish I'm using is a Minwax Spar Urethane. This is a water-based finish. It's similar to a polycrylic. It's got some sort of UV protection. It says it can go outdoors. I probably would be a little scared to use it outdoors. I just use it because sometimes it's easier to get than the polycrylic in the gallons. Um, uh, it's sold in the little quart cans, and then not every store has it in the gallon cans. And the store that I go to often uh, has this. So I use a roller to get it down quick, and then I use a brush to kind of uh, just tip it off. Um, a lot of times I just use a brush, but the roller is a quick way to get really thin coats. This is just the bottom of the table, um, so I'm not as concerned about that. I just kind of give it a crude sanding to knock things down a little bit, knock the glue down, and then I'll flip it over and go ahead and trim the table to length, put the chamfers on all the edges, and finish the top. I have to use this tabletop, uh, this table, in just a few hours, so that is another reason for using the water-based fi uh, finish. It dries very quickly. I'd probably rather use polyurethane on this. Um, but at the same time, this stuff applied in thin coats, you can get a nice finish on something. So let me continue on. I don't have a tray, so I'm just kind of dipping the roller, but it doesn't really matter. This is just a first coat anyway. You're just trying to get finished down and dry to where you can move on to the next coat. First coat applied, still wet. That was the final coat of finish. So again, we're using that Minwax water-based spar urethane. And I'm pleased with the end result of this table. I thought it would be more contrasty with the cherry and the walnut and that's the reason I didn't want to do this but there's so much variation just in the walnut that when the cherry comes in with these saw marks it uh, I think it all blends in nicely um, so I ended up having wood like this random pieces of cherry random pieces of walnut in this rough sawn form so it just lends itself nicely to this without having to transform it and plane it as much and putting it in a tabletop like this is the way I can make the most money off this lumber doing the least amount of work. So I'm pleased with the end result uh, and the finish right now is still wet as you can see. It's actually starting to rain a little bit so I need to tuck this in under the porch a little bit more. Hopefully it dries up enough and I'll get this down to the store where I sell my tables in a little bit.
It's the next day, but I just delivered that table to the store. Before I even got back home, which is a eight minute, five to eight minute drive back from that store to my house, the owner called me up and asked me if I had another table ready for him. And he just laughed and said, I'm just joking with you. And he said that they had just sold the table that was in the store. So the, it was actually a person who was in the store when I dropped it off. I was kind of lingering around. I actually talked to the person, but not about the tables at all. It was just a friendly person in the store. And I always end up talking to people when I'm down at the store I sell my tables from. But they ended up buying the table before I even got back to my house. So that is pretty much an instant sale, and that's never occurred before. I've sold tables after they've been in the store for about a week or so, and then most of them can sit around anywhere from a month to months. It just depends on the time of the year. Uh, I don't know. And then there's just like random cycles that people go through. Of I can't keep a table in the store. And then it'll be like six months that takes for someone to buy a table out of a store. I have no idea what causes some of these cycles and the same thing happens from orders directly to me. I'll have nobody order anything for months and months and months, truly months. And then I will have three orders happen in one day. It'll be just random stuff. I have no idea what causes that. Um, and, I've, and I've talked to other kind of crafts people and, and just people in general that sell things directly to the public and they say they all experience the same thing and they have, cannot make sense of it whatsoever. But. Uh, why am I talking about this? The reason is, is now I need to replace a table I just took down in the store yesterday, but I do not have enough wood. These two boards behind me, these are the only boards long enough that I have right now that I'm willing to use, that's a better way of saying it, that I'm willing to use on one of my tabletops right now. I have a bunch of quarter saw and white oak, but I want that for myself. Um, so this is not enough to make a seven foot by uh, 42 inch table, which, which is the uh, fit the base that I already have. I had a, a base already made, so I want to make a top to fit it to where I don't have to make the base right now. So my solution is I'm looking to all of my scrap pieces of wood. Bunches of pieces of wood, random, cherry, oak, um, pine, there's some, I mean this is ash, and then there's some white oak mixed in there. So it's a bunch of random stuff. There's a longer one, here's a longer one, and a shorter one, a shorter one. So my solution to that, instead of throwing all this away, it's too nice to throw away and it's too short to use in anything I normally use, is I'm going to make short boards into long boards. I took all this scrap wood, ran it through my thickness planer, got it all the same thickness. Then I took my track saw, straightened out one side of each board. Then I went to the radial arm saw, this right here, or a miter saw, whatever you have. And I squared off using the nice straight edge as a reference, so it's a 90 degree perfect cut. Then I'll take my Festool uh, Domino right here, this is the XL, the 700. And I'm going to use these, these are 8 millimeter dominoes. And I'm going to piece these two boards together. The other thing that I'll do is I will take my Craig jig and on the underside of these boards I'm going to run a screw from one of these boards into the other one. That will act as a clamp only. I'm not relying on that as a structural thing. I'm not even really relying on these to be that structural. These right here will basically keep everything lined up to where when I squeeze that, uh, clamp these together with that pocket hole screw, it keeps the tops of these boards from uh, kind of uh, coming out of alignment. The other thing this is going to do is it's going to make it stronger if you're pushing down right on that spot. So I can have two of these probably set in, you know, about like that. Then, once that glue is set, what I do is I come back in. I don't have to wait for the glue to set. The screw holds it in place. I will measure over on each side, and I will rip this board perfectly straight with my track saw, and I'll have made a long board out of two short boards. So this is a, an example of a nice wide board, but then I've also got all these over here that are between four and six inches wide. So the real strength in this, for those of you who think this sounds crazy, comes when you do this. The screw acts as a clamp. These act keep everything aligned, plus a little bit of a shear strength or whatever it would be called in that direction. Then, when you bridge the, that gap, all of a sudden you've got this glue joint and this becomes extremely strong. I've done this on a table and I walked around on top of the table and bounced up and down and nothing cracked or anything. This right here, the strength of wood glue on a proper joint is incredibly strong. People ask me all the time, is the top just glued together? Um, it's people basically I think that just don't have a reference of how uh, strong wood glue really is. It will rip the wood all to pieces before the actual glue joint breaks if you are doing it correctly. And in this case, everything is jointed nice and everything's cut perfectly square. Uh, just figuring out a way to make something out of all this wood that otherwise I would have basically nothing to do 
uh, do with it. Um, and it's of course a whole lot more work and I think to combat that what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell this table for more than I normally sell it for. So I'm just doing this to get rid of my scrap wood and because I don't have any other wood to make a tabletop out of. But I think I'm going to try to spin the whole look of it into a marketing thing. I'm going to call it something like a reclaimed quilted tabletop. Reclaimed wood quilted tabletop or something because it's going to be a patchwork of all different types of woods. So this is red oak and then white oak. Well that might be red oak too. Sometimes it's hard to tell. But just different colored woods. There's cherry, there's ash, there's pine. Uh, I think I have some, a piece of walnut and, and, and all kinds of stuff that I can kind of mix into this. And if it looks too contrasty, one thing that you could do is you could put a stain across the top. You would still see that variation in the boards, but it would kind of uh, even things out if it was just a little too patchwork looking for you. But just something I wanted to show you. I thought this was a good solution for people. Of course, this makes a big difference. Uh, the track saw makes it easy, but you could also use a jointer. Um, but you would not need to have this to do this. You could just pocket hole screw your board together several times and then make sure that you have good overlap in your glue joints. And that's going to be a lot of strength as well. The other thing that you could do is in your uh, aprons running around, imagine that is a table. You got legs in each corner. You could just put a couple cross pieces on your apron that would add more support to the underside of the table if you weren't confident in your uh, joints and you thought that that may cause an issue on the table. So while a table is just for dishes and all that stuff, you never know what somebody's going to be doing on top of a table, so you might as well make it strong. Somebody may get up on the table to change a light bulb in the ceiling or something, so you don't want to set somebody up to uh, you know fall in through a, like it's a bear trap or something. So um, make it strong, make it right. Blah, blah, blah. Here's all of those boards put together with the tenons and pocket hole screws. So just this one board here, you can see that is three individual short boards to make this one long board. And it looks crazy right now. But now I'm going to uh, join out that other side, basically ripping it to width using my track saw. And here's that tabletop in my clamping rack all glued up and some shots of it outside as well. While it was a time-consuming process, I think it is one of those things. It's probably worthwhile every once in a while to kind of burn up some of your lumber. Maybe kind of reserve it for certain tables that I can sell for more, not just a table I stick in the store. I did pump the price on this one by about $100, which really isn't compensating for the additional time. But it's something a little bit extra just to kind of make it stand apart from the other ones. Um... I would rather make a regular table than this one, you know, when you consider all the time involved in it. Um, uh, we're going to go ahead and call this video here. So it's going to be part one. And then in part two, hopefully I'll, you know, work on something else and actually get the shop cleaned up. Thank you all for watching. Check out the other videos on the channel. Be sure to subscribe if you're not. If you're not watching my other channel, Homemade Home, go over there and see that's where I'm renovating houses. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.